So now let me show the actual uh, Unity package of the latest version for Yuma. So let me just open here Unity and I'm going to create a new project. Let me set this to Yuma folder and example. Sim. Okay. So at least for uh, starting uh, testing this latest version, it's a good idea to start with a clean project, especially because since the late, latest um, public version, there has been a lot of changes, so it's a good idea to start with a clean, clean scene. Here. So I'm going to import everything. There is a lot of new content. So all files are ready. Let me just show here. So now all the files are under um, are inside the Yuma folder here, and uh, we have the release notes. So let me show here what changed. So first of all, you will notice we had a close uh, version, the, the seventh one. Uh, this one didn't actually go public. This was the last one for the release candidate. So we had a lot of changes, uh, especially the most important ones around the uh, ser serialization, DNA, um, the UV layout uh, received a lot of changes. I've included uh, new contents. And also we changed the standard for assets. Uh, for the libraries, now they are um, scriptable objects. It's they are lightweight and more efficient, and in fact, it, it makes more sense using them than uh, the prefab standard uh, way I was using until this version. We have also new features: um, the twist bone for the forearm and also the overlay library with the extra functions. And also I'm going to show that we can actually save and load avatars now. Well, in fact, this was always possible, but I have included some beautiful buttons that you can use for saving them. And uh, also we fixed some stuff uh, for the material builder. Now, if you been getting problems building for iOS, Android, or uh, web player. Now this probably uh, covered and fixed this kind of problem. And uh, also we identified some bugs, um, limitations, and it's important to show those. So we have this uh, nasty uh, error. I actually still didn't manage to correct this one. Uh, this is a tricky one because it's not easy to replicate the problem, so it, it's still not uh, corrected. But this actually don't break the, the avatar creation. But uh, it's, uh, we are still trying to handle this and find out what's going on. Also, Johan uh, identified that the Skin and Mesh Combiner has a specific bug. If you're uh, creating slots with extra bones, and in case the extra bones don't, um, don't include any influence for any, any verts of the mesh, uh, the, the actual result won't be correct. So each extra bone should have at least one influence over one vertex. And also for the mobile devices, there are some compressions that actually force the texture to be square. And uh, of course, as we are using the rect on some overlays and um, those edges, the position and uh, size of the overlay, having this change for the square texture is a problem. 
So right now I'm recommending not using compression specifically for uh, mobile devices in case the, the compression forces uh, square texture. So the best solution for reducing memory uh, is actually using the overlay library and reducing the textures, uh, the texture size. So let me show the scene itself with the, the demo scene with the sample. Uh, so we have here on the Yuma project scenes and uh, this scene here is the default one. And uh, by default now we have the Yuma crowd with Atlas resolution uh, with value one. Also as always by default, we have uh, used Pro here, but uh, if you're using the indie version, you should uncheck this one. And also, we still use light probes, so probably on um, indie version, you might need to adjust the light of the scene, so you can actually have some similar results uh, with the ones I'm showing here. Let me just add this. And uh, now, as I've already showed, we have the uh, mass edges for all the overlays. So I can actually uh, compress and set the read tag and apply those changes and adjust resolution. So now those, uh, the resolution, I'm using the the Atlas scale as one because I'm, I've actually uh, reduced the the entire overlays uh, one time. So now, if I take a look here, they are uh, 1024 and compressed as, as set here. And um, this is usually enough for most projects. Probably for um, not high-end machines, you might even consider reduce this even more, or at actually changing the Atlas resolution here. And uh, also, now we have. Uh, let, let me just start this. Okay. So we have a bunch of avatars. So first of all, you can see now we have long hair. We have those uh, elven ears. And uh, I'm not sure if we have any big news. Let me take a look here. Yeah, this one. This one is uh, big news. Great. And uh, now, uh, as I've said, it's possible to save the avatar. So here I've already included on the prefab this Yuma save tool. So even while the game is running, I can actually let me just name this guy. Um, maybe um, the big news guy. And uh, let me save this. Probably let me just keep this one on the desktop. Save and uh, at any time I can select any other after and actually load the <coughs> guy. So desktop, yeah. Okay, so you can see here it's basically the same guy, but now as each of them is a um, unique avatar, I can actually change specifically this one. And the other is you know. And of course I can hit Z to undo all the changes. Uh, this is also uh, you know, on the, being done on the customization codes. Uh, using serialization also to simplify how all this can be handled. Um, also, 
it's important to show that now we have um, separated all the contents and as I uh, explained it all content now are set as um, scriptable objects so they handle the contents now same applies for overlays and um, the races but of course we use the prefab for actually creating the instantiating the object and uh, customizing them um, other thing I would like to show is the changes uh, done on the Yuma crowd as this is basically one of the most uh, most important uh, code if you're starting and want to understand how to create the avatar. Um, so here, okay. So here, um, basically, the uh, most of the code is basically the same, but now we changed how the overlays and slots are being set. It's not a big change, but uh, it's certainly a good one. So we have here the, the we can have as many slots uh, as it, we want. So actually now I've set for 15. And also it's possible to uh, have empty slots in the end. So I don't need to fill all, all of those 15 slots. So this is how we are actually creating uh, the slots. Now we call uh, instantiate slot on the slot library. And uh, we have also the instantiate overlay on the overlay library for generating the overlays themselves. And uh, as you can see, it's possible to instantiate an overlay and set its color. That's how I'm uh, changing the color of the eye. Um, here you can see that I've instantiated a male face slot. And here I'm setting the overlay for this same slot based on the index. Uh, and changing the, the overlay and uh, applying a specific color that I've created up in here. And well, basically the same applies for everything else. Um, another important change um, that's it's really important to show uh, is for the slots sharing the same overlay. Let me find some, probably the hands. So okay, this is a good example, the hands. It's been set for slot number three. And uh, I'm not only telling the name of the slots, but I'm also defining that it's sharing the same slot as the the guy here, the number two. So the torso, if I'm not wrong. Yes, torso. So basically, here I'm telling that those two guys and some others, some other guys, are sharing the same overlay. Same here on the feet. Um, the legs. So this uh, makes sure that all of them uses the same uh, texture of the body. And uh, female after is basically the same. So, but uh, I'm using a dynamic list. So just to show that it's possible to use both ways. And uh, now, actually, you you can call the dirty and set. Uh, both shape, texture, and um, mesh. Uh, if each of them need to be recalculated or not, and probably the rest is very similar to what you've seen. I've just included some extra uh, sliders, like for example the head uh, head shape. It's possible now to change the head shape based on this value here, for example. 
and there are some others, uh, other small changes. But well, uh, basically those cover the, the basics for the web changer on this version. And uh, hopefully this will be really nice uh, if you're willing to, to update your projects to the latest version. Um, for the final official version that will be uh, uploaded for Asset Store and uh, GitHub, probably I am not going to include any new feature. Uh, I will focus on handling the known bugs and uh, handle any limitation that might reduce uh, the potential of this project. So um, I hope you guys are happy with this version and hopefully the official one will arrive very very soon. So that's it. Uh, goodbye guys, I'm really happy with how Yuma has evolved and that's an amazing project for me. See ya, goodbye.